Hello and welcome to lecture 13, the SAS Companion for split plot designs and the analysis of those. So let's again get into SAS. Maximize. Make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so we're actually going to be doing, let's see, what are we doing? Example 10.7 on page 557, which means we'll be inputting the data from 10.19. Uh, so, boom, data, let's call it DT1019. Then um, the input. If we read through this, there's going to be four variables. First variable will be manufacturer. Second will be cones. Third will be pins. And then the last one will be energy. That last one is the dependent variable. Then instead of having me just, having you watch me uh, type in all those numbers eventually, let's go ahead and just copy and paste them in. They're all there, I hope. Just to double check, let's do proc univariate. And let's run it. Let's double check that we have no errors in the log. Nope, no errors in the log, so that, nothing, no syntax errors. Manufacturer, standard deviation is 1.42857143. For the number of cones, standard deviation is 1.42857143. Pins, the other, the last of the three categorical variables, standard deviation is 0 0.5050, 7627. And then the dependent variable, the numeric dependent variable, energy, uh, the mean is, is 386.12, standard deviation is 66.1370377. So make sure you're get using the same data I am. All right. So as usual, let's go ahead and try to replicate the data or the results in uh, table 1020. Oops. So this will be the table 1020. Which proc should we use? Yeah, believe it or not, it's going to be proc GLM again. There we go. And as expected, we have to specify the class. In this case, the class is. And then the model. This all should be very familiar. Dependent variable is energy. And it's going to be manufacturer pins, manufacturer times pins, cones, subsuming manufacturer. And then, last but not least, specify random. The random effects, pins, and cones. It's a function of manufacturer. And there we go. That's the typical GLM. I mean, we've seen this before. We probably could have guessed. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. Two levels in pins, five levels in cones, five levels in manufacturer. Notice I used one, two, three, four, five instead of A, B, C, D, E. Here's the NOVA table for the model. Here's the R squared values, the coefficient of variation, the root mean squared, etc. And the R squared describes how well the model fits the data. 
the root mean squared is just the square root of the mean squared error of 98. P-value in the ANOVA table is less than alpha, therefore we reject the null hypothesis that the model tells us nothing. And we conclude that there is information in the model about the dependent variable. Type 1 sums of squares, type 3 sums of squares, focus on the type 3s, but notice they're the same at this point. That won't be true in the future. Type 3s are the ones that you should be using. Manufacturer, there's four degrees of freedom. That should not surprise us because there's five levels in manufacturer. Pins, there's two degrees of freedom. Doesn't surprise us because there's two levels in pins. Pins times manufacturer is four. Doesn't surprise us because one times four is four. The number of degrees of freedom of error, and we have the model is 29. 29 minus four minus four minus one gives us 20. So that's the number of degrees of freedom for the cones in manufacturer. Here are the F values. Here are the P, va the P values. Let's look at the expected mean squares to determine which of these uh, P values and F values are appropriate. If we're testing manufacturer, then you want to make sure that everything is gone except for that which means we should be dividing by error and cones in manufacturer, not just error. So that F value is not appropriate. So how do we get the right F values? Well, if remember back when we were just learning how to do random effects, the test function or the test option. And here's what's added. Here's the manufacturer, four degrees of freedom, same type three sums of squares, mean squared is the same. F value is different. The F value before was 471.48. It's now 36.31. Because the 471.48 was the mean squared for the manufacturer divided by the mean squared error, which doesn't isolate what we want it to isolate. We want it to isolate just this part. We need. We should be dividing by the variance of the cones manufacturer, which is what this does. So this 36.31 is the mean squared for manufacturer divided by the mean squared for the cones of manufacturer. And the rest of these are the same as above because they all should have the mean squared error as the denominator. So let's look at table 1020 in our textbook, page 558. Let's see how much information we've been able to get from SAS. Okay, the first part, model error, that would be this top ANOVA table. Then the R squared stuff goes in the next part. And then that source, that's not the type 3s and type 1s ANOVA tables here. It's these two tables. Double check, manuf, degrees of freedom 4, ANOVA sums of squares, mean squared, F value. Ooh, that 471 is the wrong F value. It's the one from up here. The correct F value, which is given below the bottom part of that table, 3631, is right there. So again, pay attention. Well, you've got two options here. One, pay attention. I always encourage paying attention to which mean squared you should be dividing by to get the F value. Because not always should you be dividing by the mean squared error. In this case, you should be dividing by the mean squared of the cones in manufacturer. Because manufacturer contains the cone variation along with the mean squared error. Or you can just throw on the slash test and that will almost always give you the right answer. Now let's look at table 1021. This will be the uh, Tukey test. Let's go ahead and see if we can re recreate that table as well.
So if we remember back when we were doing the fixed effects in the one-way analysis of variance and post hoc tests, we discovered how to do the two key tests. It was the mean statement and then the categorical variable. Back then it was the categorical variable. Here it's the fixed effect that we care about. And then the option was two key. And that was it. And we hit enter or error for me function f8. And this is our grouping. And notice that this grouping does not match the grouping in uh, table 1021. And if we look closely at these tables and table 1021, we discover the difference is this minimum significant difference. That's one difference. If we trace it back, the critical value is right. Ah, but this error mean squared is wrong. According to table 1021, that mean squared error is 1272.44. So what happened here? Why didn't SAS give us the right answers? To see that, we notice that what the table, table 1021, is using is the mean squared for the cones of manufacturer, which is what it should be using because the manufacturer's denominator is going to be that mean squared. Whereas the two key tests that we just did in SAS use the mean squared error, used this mean squared. So SAS did it wrong. How can we get SAS to do it right though? We're adding a second option to the mean statement. The first was two key, the second is E. You have to specify what that error degree, uh, that error is going to be. And that's what it is. This cones manufacturer is the denominator for the manufacturer F value. Which means if we're doing two key tests on the manufacturer variable, then we need to ensure that SAS uses the mean squared of the cones of the manufacturer, which is what this option does. So now we run this, and we get the output from SAS and compare it to table 1021. We discovered, great, got everything working correctly now. Minimum significant difference is indeed 47.736. Critical value from the table error mean squared, that's the right one to use, degrees of freedom, alpha, etc. So the key for these split plot designs when you're analyzing them, as it was with the nested, is to keep track of what your denominators should be. Remember that manufacturer, let's go to here. There we go. Remember that the mean squared for the manufacturer contains all of these terms. We need it to we need to isolate just this last term. Which means we need to somehow divide out by these first two terms. That doesn't match the mean squared error. Only this first term is the mean squared error. But it does match that cones of manufacturer the cones nested within manufacturer. So again, as with nesting, split plot, it's all about the denominator. Be aware, you really do have to make sure about this, of what your denominator should be, what those sources of error are that you need to control for. And then figure out a way of telling SAS what that is. And for the two-key test, it's E is equal to that source of error. And for the PROC GLM, it's just adding on the test option and then let SAS figure it out. So that's it. That is Split Plot Designs, Lecture 13, SAS Companion. Take care of yourself. Bye.